Okay, so guys, patient's rights. No? This was touched among the topics that we have discussed, but then I need to have it reinforced because it's discussed in detail in our textbook also. And other than that, it's very important for you to be reminded on this. Now, when I talk about the patient's bill of rights, take note, ha, patient's bill of rights. Okay? Uh, we have the term bill of rights, which is embodied in what part of our constitution? When I say bill of rights, what part of the constitution is that? Ha, students, what part of the constitution is your bill of rights? Sige na. Your constitution has several articles. Article 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 12, if I'm not mistaken. Where is the Bill of Rights indicated? Sige na, I would want to see your response. Okay, very good. Who was that? Law 3, so sir. Okay, so that's correct, no? It's Article 3. Ah, the Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution is the one that is indicating your patient's Bill of Rights. Now, uh, your Bill of Rights, I mean, Article 3, 1987 Constitution, that's your Bill of Rights. But right now, this is your patient's bill of rights. So patient's bill of rights is actually embodied on the hospital policies. It's embodied on the hospital guidelines, hospital procedures, and that of the Department of Health. So it talks about how the patients would information on how they can reasonably accept or expect care, I mean, to be treated during their treatment or hospital stay. Take note, your patient's bill of rights is not considered to be legally binding it only provides goals and expectations for patient treatment. And then recently, it has been renamed as patient care partnership. Okay, just for us to emphasize that your patient are your partners in the care that you have. Now, why did I ask you about the Bill of Rights earlier? Because the Bill of Rights, which is stipulated in Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution, is actually legally binding. The Bill of Rights in the 1987 Constitution is legally binding. However, if I talk about the patient's Bill of Rights, your patient's Bill of Rights is not legally binding. Okay? That's the difference between the two. Now, if you would look at the patient's Bill of Rights in the Philippines, these are some of the Bill of Rights that are indicated. One is that the patient has the right to considerate and respectful care. And according to this right, a patient is entitled to an acceptable standard of care and consideration during the provision of that care. What do I mean by that? If a patient would go in the hospital, they need to get the care that they deserve. Okay? It's not possible for you to say, Sir, wala ka kwarta. I'm so sorry. We will not be able to treat you kasi wala kang pera. No, we cannot say that. It is not also possible for us to say that, Sir, I am so sorry. We cannot accommodate you. Please go out. Okay, you are not to be here. Okay, that's not how we say considerate and respectful care. Now, one particular example perhaps that you can encounter is that in the private hospital. Diba? Private hospital siya. When I talk about private hospital, my dear students, there will be expenses that are entailed in the private hospital setting. Now, if I talk about these expenses in the private hospital, medyo malaki siya compared sa public hospital. Now, let's picture a patient. Ha? Patient walang pera. Pupunta sa private hospital because she is massively bleeding. Halimbawa, grabe ang bleeding. Let's say, for example, there was an accident and then your patient is bleeding and the nearest hospital near the incident site is a private hospital. If that's the case, guys, can I send the patient to Western Visayas Medical Center or any regional center for that example? Pwede ba na ipadala ko siya? Or kailangan ba munang i-first aid ko siya before I would bring the patient to other areas? What do you think is best to be done? First aid, sir. Okay. So class, one of the things that you can do is that you need to have your patient on first aid. Okay? Now, the patient will actually say, no, mahamba lang patient. The patient will say, Dale, I'm so sorry, we cannot afford the services here in the private hospital. We need to transfer to a government hospital. What would you do? Will you let the patient walk out of the hospital and walk to a public hospital or do you need to facilitate transfer? What do you think will you do, guys? Allow the patient to just walk out and transfer or do you need to facilitate the transport of that patient? 
facilitate, sir. Need to facilitate, sir. You need to facilitate the transport of that patient. Okay? Oftentimes, this actually happens. No? Okay? I have been working in a private hospital, and this is the usual picture. The patient will go there because they think that the private hospital is cheap. Okay? There are actually private hospitals that are cheaper okay, compared to other private hospitals. No? Let's say, for example, if I will compare hospital A, B, C, D, all private, hospital A may be cheaper compared to other hospitals. But if you would compare it to a government hospital, it's very malayo, of course. Uh, it's very malayo if you will compare it to a public hospital. In the private hospital, for example, you might be paying 5000 In the public hospital, it's all free, okay? free of charge, for example. So sometimes the patient would go to the hospital. And then as a nurse, take note, ha? hindi pwede that you will give everything that the patient, that ideal care would mean. Ha? Halimbawa, yung example ko kanina na babae who is severely bleeding. Pagkatapos pagpasok niya sa hospital, lahat na lang ng gamit, binigay mo na sa kanya. Binigyan mo na siya ng gauze, binigyan mo na siya ng ideal na dressing na pagkamahal-mahal, binigyan mo siya ng mga ideal na sling, lahat. Lahat ng mga expensive na gamit, ginamit mo sa kanya. Hindi po tayo ganon. Ah, hindi po tayo ganon in our public health setting here or our health setting here in the Philippines. Eh, sir, anong gagawin natin? As mentioned earlier, just do first aid. In other words, address the life-threatening conditions that your patient may have. Now, once you were able to address the life-threatening conditions that your patient actually had, the next thing that you will do is to appraise the patient of the possible expenses that she will have. Okay? Bakit ganon? Because if it will come to a time, that, for example, the patient needs to pay. For example, you will inform the patient, Hey, ma'am, ito po yung amount ng dressing that you will be spending for. The dressing is, for example, worth 5,000 pesos. Tapos sasabihin sa'yo ng patient, I'm so sorry, we do not have money for that amount. That way, you can actually refer your patient to other institutions. Okay? That way, you can refer your patient to other institutions. Eh, hey, ma'am, you might be thinking, Sir, okay lang yon na hindi ko bibigay sa kanya yung expensive na option kasi nga hindi kaya ng pasyente. Yes. No? As long as you have done first aid to your patient. As long as you have done first aid to your patient. Okay? So according to this right, acceptable standard of care. It says acceptable standard of care. It does not say highest standard of care. Why? What will happen? If walang pera si pasyente, pagkatapos binigay mo sa kanya lahat, tapos wala siyang ibabayad, hindi pa siya makakalabas ng isang private hospital. Or baka may kailangan pa siyang i-process before siya makalabas ng isang private hospital. Okay? So that's one consideration that you need to remember. Now, the patient also has the right to obtain from his doctor complete current information about his diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis in terms that the patient can be reasonably be able to understand. That's why when we are talking to our patient, what kind of terms are we supposed to use? Are we supposed to use medical terms or layman's terms? What are the type of terms? Okay, so should be using your layman's terms. Ha? Dapat gumagamit tayo ng layman's terms na tinatawag natin. So hindi pwede na gumamit tayo ng medical jargon. And as nurses, it is your responsibility, for example, dumating ang laboratory result. If the laboratory result is normal, it's okay. Let it stay on the chart. But if the laboratory result is abnormal, right away, inform the doctor. Baka kasi makita nyo dyan, ha? nakasabi dyan, the patient has the right to obtain from his doctor. It talks about doctors. But also take note that as nurses, you have a responsibility to give that information to the doctors. Kasi ano yung mangyayari? Ano? For example, may mga laboratories ka, tapos you were not able to give it to the doctors the doctors will also not be able to prompt their patients on what is the ideal care that they can receive. Okay, so that's why dapat alert ka bilang nurse to inform them. Next, so they should be able to receive from his doctor information necessary to give consent prior to start of any procedure. Now, consent. Let's talk briefly about consent. When do I get the consent? Before, during, or after the procedure? Before. Before. Before the procedure. When I talk about the consent, when is, who is muna? Who is the best person to get the consent? Physician or nurse? Sige na. 
magpapasurgery si patient. Who is the best person to get the consent? Is it the physician or the nurse? Okay, may mga angel na dumaan. Angel of God, speak out. <laughs> Sige na, try to think. For example, ha, the surgeon will be the one to do the procedure. Sasabihin niya, hey patient, I will open your abdomen, I will look at your intestines, I will look at your stomach. And then you are the nurse who will assist the doctor. Now, who will get the consent from the patient? Will it be the physician or the nurse? Okay? Correct the physician, answer. sir. Correct. It will be the physician because he is the one who will be performing the procedure. Now, when I talk about necessary information to give consent, what do we mean by that? Does that talk about benefits, risk, or both benefits and risk? Both, both benefit and the risk, sir. Okay. So, guys, nurses of the future, if you will hear a doctor say, Ma'am, don't worry. If I will do the procedure, you will be 100% okay. Okay? Tingnan nyo class yung doctor, baka si Jesus na po yan. Kay kidding aside class, ha, there is no such thing that when we talk to our patient, it's 100% it. So you need to educate the patient of the risk and the benefits of the procedure. Okay? That's one thing. Now, another, the patient has the right to refuse treatment and to the extent permitted by the law and to be informed of the medical consequences of this action. As I would always remind you, if the patient would refuse, okay, nag-refuse siya, Halimbawa, he does not want to take the medication. What's the next thing that you will do? Sige, anong una natin gagawin? Let me give choices. First, in, uh, inform physician. A, inform physician. B, educate the patient. C, document. What would you do first B. among the three? Educate, educate the patient. The patient okay. So, ha, I repeat, ha, when somebody would refuse, once the patient would refuse, educate him first. Educate. Sir, ito po yung mangyayari. Matitigok ka kung hindi ka iinom ng gamot. Okay? Don't use that term. Ha? Baka, baka you will use that to your patients. Don't threaten them. Ha? If you will threaten them, for example, you will say, Sir, you will die if you will not take this medicine. That is threatening your patient. Okay? You're not allowed to do that. But instead, you should educate your patients. Sir, if ever that you will be taking the medicines, these are if you if ever you will not be taking the medicines, these are the possible things that might happen. Okay? Sir, una, uubo ka. Pangalawa, may lalabas na dugo. Pangatlo, mamamatay ka. I joke lang yung part na mamamatay. Okay? So parang ganun na, you need to educate your patient if what will happen. After you educate your patient, tapos sabi niya, ayaw ko talaga. I don't want to take the medication. The next thing that you would do is among the choices that I have given, what's the next thing that you will do? Document, sir. Inform the physician, mm -hmm. sir. Inform muna your tito doctor. Inform muna your physician. After you had informed the physician, it is actually the physician who will be orienting, who will be talking to your patients if what would be the effect by the time that they will refuse taking the medications. Pag ayaw pa rin maniwala kay physician, document. That will be the time that you will document. Ha? Ah? So, hindi pepede, again, I would like to remind you this, hindi pepede na uh, masabihin ng patient, I refuse to take the medicine. Okay, ma'am, please sign this paper that you are refusing taking the medicine. No, that's not how it works in our setting. Ha? Dapat explain nyo muna sa kanila because judgments of the patient may be impaired, especially if it is their first time also to be admitted since also they are considered as patients. Now, next, privacy. Okay, privacy. So when I say privacy, halimbawa, na-admit si mayor sa inyo. Okay? Mayor, as in the city mayor or maybe your municipal mayor na-admit sa hospital mo. Can I let everybody in the, in the hospital know about it? Can I let everybody in the hospital know? No, it? sir. No, ha? E sabihin mo, sir, mayor siya. Okay, mayor nga siya. Paano kung may death threat si mayor? Pagkatapos, nalaman ng mga kriminal na nandoon siya pala sa hospital mo. Okay? Usually, guys, when we are handling highly political patients, no, what they are doing is that they request for direct-to-room admission. In other words, class, diretso sila sa room, they are not passing through the ER, and then they are managed at the room. And then their room are not usually documented. Ha? Their room class are not usually published unless they will be the one who will be informing the public about it. Okay? Kung si mayor nagsabi sa public, hey, I'm admitted here in Hospital de Santos, 
Okay, sige, it's okay. Pero pag ikaw na nerd sa sabihin, uy, alam mo ba, si mayor nang doon admit sa amin, ikis, you might be able to lose your license. Now, let's take for example, you're the nurse in station. Somebody called you. And then, the person asked, nurse, good morning, good day, nurse. Uh, Nandiyan ba si patient De, Lo De Los Santos? What would be the best response that you will say? Somebody is asking you, hello, nurse. Uh, Diyan ba si patient De Los Santos? What would be the best response that you will say? He asked, sir, kung kaano ano yun to si ang patient ka sir. Okay. Tapos, let's say, for example, atiyahin ko yan. What would you do next? Tapos, Ita confirm. Tatanungin ka muna. Ita confirm, ha, sir. Ka. What room siya? What room siya? Tiyahin ko yan. What room siya? Sige, go ahead, Camille. Ita confirm, sir, sa patient kung kilala na gidman to ang tong nag-ask. Okay, that's one thing that you can actually do. Huh? And then guys, never ever give a hint whether the patient is there or not. Okay? Never ever give a hint whether the patient there is not. For example, if you're talking about a highly valued patient, usually class A, for example, criminals, or let's say, for example, politicians, let's say, for example, influential people, Uh, we are not treating them, guys. Ha? We are not treating them spe with, with special considerations. Hindi. Actually, mas medyo sakit pa nga sila ng ulo sa hospital. Eh. Rather than thinking na, uy, si Mayor, special treatment mo yan. Paminsan-minsan, actually, yung papasok sa isip mo, ay, nandyan na naman si Mayor. Kailangan na naman natin ng extra caution. Okay? By the way, if ever somebody will be asking you, kasi malalaman nyo yan eh. Halimbawa, station 1 ako, tapos station 2 kayo nagjujuti you will know that mayor is admitted in station 1. If you are the nurses in station 2, and if you will be asked, you know, hey, nandyan ba si mayor? Do not answer the question, ay wala po siya dito, nandun po siya sa station 1. Do not ever give an idea to them where the patient is. Okay? Even what floor, even what room, okay? do not ever give the idea. Okay? Because as mentioned here by Carmela, you can't give information. No? You can't give those to information. And actually, if the, 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 the information is asked through call, you're actually not sure whether this information, this person that's asking the information is authorized to receive the information. So ano pong dapat nating sabihin? No? Anong dapat nating sabihin? We are being taught that, we are being taught that, sasabihan lang sila na, ma'am, I'm so sorry, I could not accommodate your question. If you would want to know where the patient is, kindly communicate to him or his family. Okay? Ganun lang. Ha? Kahit nga minsan class, no, kahit wala yung pasyente sa hospital, we also do not say no. Also for the purpose of the benefit, uh, for, the, for the health benefit also of that patient, especially pag valued to our patient. Um, what else? May naisip pa akong example kanina. Okay? But anyway, let's see if I can remember it uh, as we go along the way. Ha? So privacy. Take note that privacy equates to security. Privacy equates to security. Pagkatapos, you know, if criminals are being admitted in the hospital, let's say, for example, those people na, halimbawa, may nagkabarilan, ano, uh, gun shooting incident, tapos he or she is the one who, who fired the gun, they are actually under also the protection of the police. So there might be police personnel who will be roaming around no, the hospital premises. That's also one of the things that you need to understand. Okay? But take note, whether they are police personnel or not, they do not have the right to access the chart of the patient. They do not have the right to access the chart of the patient. Okay? Next, the patient has the right to expect that all communications and records pertaining to his care to be treated with confidential. So class, when I say confidential, no, pag sinabi kong confidential siya, dapat po sa isipin natin that this information should only be shared to the members of the team that will be taking care of the patient. Next, the patient has the right to expect that within its capacity, a hospital must take reasonable response to their request of a patient services. The hospital must provide for the required services. Halimbawa, the doctor requested for an X-ray to a particular patient. When this doctor class will be having the X-ray for a particular patient, you expect it to be accomplished right away. Huh? Hindi siya pa pwede na ay, sige sir, hintayin natin siguro mga ano goro, mga after three days tayong magpa-x-ray. Hindi po yan pwede. Okay? 
So, sabihin mo pa, pa, paano sir kapag sira ang x-ray? You present options to the patient. Ma'am, our x-ray right now is not functioning because of this. Nangyayari yan guys, no? you could not avoid that in the hospital setting. Then you educate them. Ma'am, other options is that if your doctor would allow, we could actually do the x-ray in another hospital. We could do the CT scan in another hospital. Okay? You need to provide them those required services. Next, the patient has the right to obtain information as to any relationship of his hospital to other healthcare and educational institutions. So halimbawa, pag tayo nag-duty sa hospital bilang students, hindi pa pwede na sabihin, Hi ma'am, we are nurses here. Okay? Dapat we should reveal our identity. Hi ma'am, these are actually my students from this school. We, they will be taking care of you. They are actually level 2 students. They are level 3 students. Okay? That way, class, they will be able to understand na, ah, okay, may mga students pa lang nag-take care dito. Iba kasi iniisip, no? kapag student to yung mag-take care, the tendency is that the patient will be saying no. But guys, you need to say the truth to your patient. Ha? Hindi pwedeng itago sa kanya. Next, the patient has the right to be advised if the hospital proposes to engage in human experimentation and the patient could refuse. Okay, hospitals right now are engaged in experiments. No? But rest assured that your patient would not be engaged in the experiment without them signing any document. So hindi pe pede, ha? Bilang nurse alibawa, hindi pe pede that you will convince your patient to do it. Okay, you need to allow the researcher to talk to the patient. Okay, so what do I mean by that? For example, ha, if I am the researcher, you are the nurse assigned to the patient who would explain the benefits and risks of that research. Is it the nurse or the researcher? Sino mag explain guys? Okay, so it will be the researcher. Ah, that will be the job of your researcher. Tayo hindi pwede na ikaw na nurse, no? Kasi kung ikaw na nurse, you have direct contact to your patient. Then, the patient has the right to expect reasonable continuity of care and to know in advance what appointment times and doctors are available. Now, for the continuity of care, it goes like this. I'm the nurse on duty for 8 to 4. Okay? Halimbawa, yung aking kasama na papasok ng 4 to 12, nagkasakit. And then, there's nobody to take care of my patients. Can I leave the hospital? Or shall I wait for another nurse to come? Wait, sir. You need to wait for another nurse to come. Okay? Eh, sir, papano may date kami ng boyfriend ko. You have to postpone your date with your boyfriend because that's your word. Once these patients are not yet endorsed, they are still your responsibility. And when I say continuity of care, you need to make sure that there will be somebody who will take care of them once that they are already, once that they are still in the hospital. Okay, so kung kaya may tinatawag tayong endorsement. You write there, continuity of care is equal to endorsement. It's also equal to hands-off. Another term for endorsement is hands-off. So parang hands-off, it's your time to take care of your patients already. Okay? Then, you also have the right to examine and receive an explanation of his bills regardless of the source of baby. Limbawa, sabihin, ah, milyonaryo naman yan si sir, hayaan mo na, walang pakialam yan he can actually request for the statement of the bill. Okay? Mm, you need to be careful. Ah. By observation in the hospital, it is actually those who are rich who would actually request for their bills itemized. No? Yung mga poor nga, guys, wala na yung pake, no? Pero uh, it, I, I, I do not mean to tell you that ignore them, ah, but treat them equally. Ah. So dapat, you are conscious that everything that you are charging in the system is actually the ones that your patient actually used. Okay, so hindi pa pa dem na um you will be uh, uh keeping those from them. And then the last one here on the bill of rights is that the patient has the right to know what hospital rules and regulations apply to the conduct as a patient. Okay, halimbawa they need to know no halimbawa in the past for example one of the problems in the hospital that we encounter is that at 9 p.m. there are still people who are having a lot of noise because they are partying because they are celebrating because after the surgery of their friend something like that yes we do not uh, we do not um, in ano nga, we do not want to be killed joy but actually we need to inform them that other patients are sleeping and that they also need to keep quiet now 
to address the concerns of other people. Okay, there are things like that that we need to do. Okay, do you have any questions in mind? Sige, to end. 